multiple valued functions. So, multi valued functions. Uh, so far, we have looked at uh, problems where the functions we have been concerned with have been single valued. In other words, for a given value of uh, the complex variable z, there is a unique value of the function f of z. So, we have looked at functions, we have looked at the general case where you have a one to one map of the extended complex plane to the extended complex plane, <coughs> discovered that the most general form of this transformation is a Mobius transformation and so on. We have not looked at functions which can have more than one value for a given value of z and this is going to bring us to the idea of branch points and branch cuts and so on, because most functions are in fact multiple valued. Okay. So, let us look at the simplest example of these, let us look at a function like uh, f of z equal to z to the power of half, what I mean by the square root of z. Now, the first problem that hits you right away is that as you go around in the z plane and let us call this number equal to some w, this is the w plane. Since you take a square root here always, it implies that if z is some r e to the i theta, then the argument of w is e to the theta, theta over 2, it is half this, which means that if you cover this entire plane, the z plane 0 to 2 pi in argument you are only covering the upper half plane in w, because the argument of w will not exceed pi, it will therefore be restricted to the upper half plane. We would like to cover the entire plane in w and to do that it is clear that you must increase the argument of z up to 4 pi, so that the argument of z to the half can go up to 2 pi. But of course, if I increase it by 4 pi, then I have no way of knowing where I am. For instance, if I am sitting at this point here at some angle theta, I am at exactly the same point if I increase theta by 2 pi. So, the second time I go around from 2 pi to 4 pi, I am not sure where I am, right. If I just specify a point on the z plane in this fashion, then it is not clear whether the argument is theta or theta plus 2 pi. So, it is evident immediately that in order to cover the full w plane 0 to 4, 0 to 2 pi, you need to be able to cover z 0 to 4 pi, which means you need two copies of the z plane placed one above the other if you like, such that when I go around once the origin, I go around fully once in the z plane, I hit the argument 2 pi rather than 0 and then I go around a second time. I go from 2 pi through 3 pi to 4 pi which brings me back to 0. Okay. So, it is clear that I need two copies of the z plane in this case in order to be able to map on to the full w plane. Okay. These two copies most convenient way of picturing them we will find that once you get a little used to this it will be quite easy to do this. These two copies are called Riemann sheets. And in the case of the square root function, you need just two of these sheets because that will bring you back, will cover the entire w plane. So, it is clear that if you had z to the power one third for example, as a function, you would have to have three copies of the z plane in order to cover the w plane completely. So, you would have three Riemann sheets and so on and so forth. But we also must arrange it such that when I increase the argument of theta of z theta from 0 to 4 pi and increase beyond 4 pi, I am back to the first uh, plane, the top plane. So, the geometry of this or the topology of these sheets is not altogether trivial and we have to be a little careful as to how we do this. What is to be observed is that on the first plane, so to speak, you have w equal to square root of z, but after the argument of z increases by 2 pi, then the argument is 2 pi plus theta and I take a half. So, z to the half will be in the second sheet will be e to the i pi times square root of z, because the argument of z 
is going to be what it was originally at such a point plus 2 pi and if I take half of that I get pi and e to the i pi is minus 1. So, it is evident that on the top sheet Riemann sheet and I am going to draw that picture very shortly the value so to speak of z to the half is just z to the half, but on the bottom sheet it is minus z to the half. Now, how do we uh, picture this? Well, it is uh, immediately obvious that when z is 0 both these values coincide and whenever two different branches of a function coincide that point is called a branch point. So, z equal to 0 is a peculiar kind of singularity, it is not an algebraic, it is not a pole, it is not an accumulation point of poles, it is not an essential singularity, but it is called a branch point. So, z equal to 0 for this function Is there any other branch point in this function? Well, we know that in the extended complex plane there is just one point at infinity. So, infinity is another branch point because whether it is plus infinity, minus i infinity or i infinity does not matter, there is just one point. So, the other branch point is at z equal to infinity. Branch point also. Okay. And the way the two sheets are constructed is as follows you take the top sheet and you take the bottom sheet together and then at the point where these functions coincide in value join the two, glue these together. Okay. So, you glue them at 0 and you glue them at infinity once again and then once I cross 0 to 2 pi, I cross the point argument 2 pi and increase the argument of z by 2 pi, I should descend on to the second sheet and then I go around and come back to 4 pi I should ascend back to the first sheet. So, the way to do this is to take two sheets of paper mark an origin at the center of this paper and draw a line from 0 to infinity in any direction whatsoever most conveniently along the positive real axis all the way to infinity and then glue 0 and infinity together for the two sheets and make sure that as you cross 2 pi you descend to the second sheet as you cross 4 pi you ascend back to the first sheet. This means you make a slit and take one end of the slit in the top sheet and glue it to the bottom and vice versa. And if I draw a picture it is going to look like this here and then this is glued to the bottom sheet. This is what the bottom sheet looks like and it comes up in this fashion. So, you get the picture there are these two sheets and from 0 to infinity you have glued them, you have crossed this sheet has gone to the bottom sheet and that sheet has come to it in this fashion. So, if I start here this is the real axis positive real axis. this is 0 and that is notionally infinity on this side. This is the first sheet, so let me draw this a little better so you get a picture. In this fashion, this is the first sheet and if I extend this a little bit more so it is conveniently illustrated, this is the second sheet here. So, I am just above the real axis on the first sheet, I encircle all the way down, come to 2 pi, you slip into the second sheet at the bottom, traverse on the second sheet and I am here and then I jump up from here, I climb onto the first sheet. So, if I look at it from the edge looking into the origin from plus infinity it would look like this, pardon me, pardon me, that line, yeah this line is the line where the two branches, the line between two branch points there is a line that is where the cut is 
and that is the thing through which the slit is, that is where the slit is and the slit is common to both sheets as you can see and when I cross the cut I jump onto another sheet, I climb onto another sheet, climb down or climb up onto the second sheet always. So does this picture give you some kind of idea of what this looks like? This uh, slit is runs from 0 to infinity but it could as well have run from 0 to any infinity along any direction but it is most conveniently pictured in this fashion. Okay. And these two are the Riemann sheets. Now what you should understand is that on the Z plane, so this is sheet 1, this is 1, this is 2 and this is 2. This is looking into the branch point in this fashion, cut in this fashion. This is what the cut looks like. Hmm? And I have shown these sheets separated and this jump magnified so that you can get a picture of what is happening but actually by continuity when you are here it is the same as being here by continuity and when you are here it is the same as being here. Okay? And what is meant by being here? It means that on the top sheet if this is a Z plane, there is a branch point here, a branch cut all the way to infinity. This thing is called a branch cut and when I am here on the top sheet, I am on sheet 1 at x plus i epsilon say and I come down here, I am at x minus i epsilon on the first sheet but by continuity that is the same as being if I am here, it is the same as being here, is that f x plus plus i epsilon on the second sheet. I have just shown these things separated for convenience. In other words, if I call this function f of z, f1 on the first sheet x minus i epsilon limit epsilon goes to 0 is the same as the function on the second sheet at x plus i epsilon limit. Okay. And vice versa, being here is the same as being there and being there is the same as being here. Okay. So when you have a multiple valued function, what you need to do is to first construct the Riemann surface these two sheets together stuck in this fashion with a branch cut is called a Riemann surface and then once you have this Riemann surface at every point on this Riemann surface this function has a unique value. If that were not the case if you did not have a Riemann surface and I just do the z plane then at any given point in the z plane it is not clear whether I am talking about plus square root of z or minus square root of z. But now it is completely unambiguous at every point on the sheet there is a unique value. Once you specify z, I have got a unique value for this multiple valued function called square root of z. Okay. Now it is clear that as you cross this cut and the function goes down here from here to here there is a jump, there is a discontinuity in the function which is the same as saying there is a discontinuity if this is x plus i epsilon this is x minus i epsilon, there is a difference between, so it is clear that the discontinuity disc f of z at z equal to x some positive value since we have drawn the cut along the positive real axis, this quantity, this discontinuity is defined as f of x plus i epsilon minus f of x minus i epsilon. And what would this be? Well, that is easy to answer because on the first sheet when I am here, what is the phase of z on the positive real axis just above it as epsilon goes to 0, the phase is 0, theta is 0. So by square root of z, I mean modulus z x to the power half. So out here, the function here at this point has the value modulus x to the power half, modulus not needed because x is positive in this case. Right? And what is the value of the function here? Well when I go around z increases its argument by 2 pi, so z to the half increases the argument by e to the uh, by pi and now you have minus modulus of x to the half. So the value here 
is minus mod x to the half. That is the same as the value on the second sheet directly below this point as I have explained and that is why I called it a discontinuity out here. So on the first sheet f1, this is f1, this is the same as f1 of x plus i epsilon minus f2 of x plus i epsilon because being on the first sheet at this point is the same as being on the sheet. This is to the right of, above the real, in the real axis and this is below the real axis looking at it from this side. And what is this equal to? This is equal to mod x to the power half minus, minus mod x to the power half equal to twice mod x. And the discontinuity vanishes at 0 and after that it increases thereafter. Okay. So this idea is going to be an extremely interesting useful one for us. We will not always draw all the branch cuts because there is a lot of freedom in drawing these branch cuts because the reason is that I do not have to take the argument of z to run from 0 to 2 pi. I could say it runs from minus pi to plus pi and then of course there would be a cut like this in this direction or I could say it runs from pi over 2 to 2 pi plus pi over 2 and then there would be a cut along the imaginary axis. But it is most convenient to choose it along the real axis especially, especially the positive real axis because you can always choose the phase to be 0 directly above that. So in more complicated functions I will not always construct the Riemann surface but what I will do is to simply indicate on the plane what phases am I talking about that will immediately tell you which sheet I am on and what the discontinuities are. Now it is immediately clear that you cannot have a function with just one branch point. There has to be a branch cut running from one branch point to another branch point, at least two branch points, could be more in general and we will see examples of that. But this is not all, this is the simplest instance, the square root branch point. Now it is clear that a function like f of z equal to z to the power 1 over n where n equal to 2, 3, etc all these functions have branch points at z equal to 0 and z equal to infinity. They are called algebraic branch points and how many sheets would this function have in general? This would be an n sheeted Riemann surface. For instance, if you had 3, n equal to 3, then the counterpart of this diagram would be from, from 1, when you move around you slip to 3. Uh, into 2 and I am going to exaggerate this from 2 you slip to 3 and from 3 you go back to 1 in this fashion. So this is 1, this is 2, these two are on the same level and this is sheet 3, these two are on the same level. The, these two are supposed to coincide and the whole thing is supposed, the branch cut is supposed to come out of the, of the plane of the board. So this is a three sheeted surface such that you go around once in the first sheet, you descend to the top of the second sheet above the real axis, go around, you come back and descend just above the real axis on the third sheet, go around once, you climb back to the first sheet. Okay. So again an algebraic branch point. What happens to this function? P over Q where P and Q are integers. Well, after you can cancel out common factors, etc., p and q are co prime, say, and q is an integer greater than or equal to 2. How many sheets would this function have? It would just have q sheets because you go around q time, you go around this and q times and you end up with a 2 pi q here. The q's will cancel and this becomes an integer, so you are back to plus 1 once you multiply by an i. So this is a q sheeted structure once again. The fact that you have a power in the numerator is completely relevant. After all z cubed is completely single valued, there is no problem at all. But z to the power 3 halves has a problem, you have a branch point. Hmm? Okay. So these things are all called algebraic branch points of some kind. But there is a more complicated possibility. Suppose you had f of z 
equal to z to the power alpha, where alpha is some complex number, arbitrary, maybe an irrational number, not a rational number. What happens now? It is clear this is again multiple sheeted, but you go around once and then z to the alpha, this function's cha phase changes from 0 to 2 pi alpha and the second time you go around becomes 4 pi alpha. If you go around in the opposite sense, it becomes minus 2 pi alpha, etc. So on the so-called principal sheet of this function, where the argument of z runs from 0 to 2 pi, this function here on top the first sheet it has a value which is given by the phase 0 and then in phase 2 pi alpha just below the real axis. But you go around the second sheet then the phase change increases from 2 pi alpha to 4 pi alpha. But you could have gone around in the opposite sense and it go to minus 2 pi alpha etc. Alpha is not rational. So no matter how many times you go around you are never going to get 2 pi n i alpha is never going to be equal to 1. What would then be the sheet structure? You would have an infinite sheeted structure in this case and this thing is called a winding point. So this is z equal to 0 are also branch points, they are called winding points. They too are branch points, but you must remember that it is an infinite sheeted structure in this case. What happens now if I have a function like log z? So let us look at the log, log function. What would happen to this? Well, it also has a branch point at z equal to 0. The reason is that for instance, this on the first sheet, this is equal to this is equal to log r plus i theta, right? And it is immediately evident that on the first sheet, this i theta increases as you go from here, as you come down here by 2 pi. It is additive, you end up with a 2 pi i. Hmm? And you go around once again, then this log increases by another 2 pi i. Hmm? So in this case, it is not that the function is changing sign or getting multiplied by a phase factor, but you get an additive quantity 2 pi i on the first sheet, 4 pi i, 0 on the first sheet, 2 pi i on the next sheet, 4 pi i on the sheet below that and so on and similarly minus 2 pi i, minus 4 pi i etc. on the top sheets. So the sheet on which, so in general this function log z is therefore equal to this plus 2 pi n i in general. And the sheet n equal to 0 is the principal sheet. The sheet on which the argument theta of z runs from 0 to 2 pi. This is a logarithmic branch point z equal to 0 infinity a logarithmic what about this function what about the function f of z equal to log z minus 1 what sort of singularities does it have Well, all you have done is to shift the origin by 1, right? So it has got a branch point at z equal to 1. What sort of branch point is it? Logarithmic, Logarithmic branch point, right? I go around, I encircle this branch point once, the argument of z minus 1 changes by 2 pi and I have exactly the same behavior as before. What kind of singularity or singularities does this function have? By the way, 1 minus z is e to the i pi times z minus 1, so that is not a serious problem. This also has a branch point at z equal to 1 and at infinity and I can choose 
the cut to run in any along any ray from 1 to infinity, but what sort of singularities does it have? It is definitely got a logarithmic branch point at z equal to 1 at z equal to infinity, no question. Does it have any other singularities? Where is the singularity? Pardon? Zero. At z equal to 0, it looks like it has a singularity. But please notice that this quantity as z tends to 0, this thing has a power series expansion. So, this is equal to minus z minus z squared over 2, etc., etc. A leading term is minus z and that cancels this. So, what sort of singularity does it have? It has a removable singularity, right, at z equal to 0. But you made an assumption in making that statement. This thing implies that at z equal to 0, log 1 minus z is 0. When is log 1 minus z? Well, log minus 1 minus z is 0 at z equal to 0 implies that log 1 is 0. But when is log 1 0? Log 1 is 0 on the principal sheet. Otherwise, it is 2 pi n i. Hmm? So, this is not true. You got a 2 pi n i added here. So, what is the conclusion now? It has got a singular, it has got a simple pole at z equal to 0 on every sheet except the principal sheet. On the principal sheet, the singularity has gone. The residue vanishes and there is no pole at all. So, you have to be careful. This immediately tells you you have to be extremely careful. So this function, simple pole at z equal to 0 on all, all sheets of the log except the principal sheet. And that happens because log 1 equal to 0 only on the n equal to 0 okay. so you got to be cautious there could be some singularities on some sheets and there could be other singularities on other sheets it doesn't always follow that the singularity goes all the way through we'll construct more complicated examples but is this clear why there is a singularity only on the sheets other than n equal to 0? On n equal to 0, it becomes a removable singularity. So, do not blindly put log 1 equal to 0. You got to ask which sheet are you on to do this. What sort of singularities does this function have? f of z equal to z minus a to the power of half z minus b to the power of half, let us say a and b are real, just for simplicity, let us say a and b are positive constants. So, 0 less than a less than b. Okay. What sort of singularities does this they have? It is clearly got branch points, it is clearly got some square root branch points and wherever the square roots vanish, the arguments vanish, this has got branch points at those points. So, you agree that it has a branch point on the z plane. Now, I am not even trying going to try to construct the Riemann sheet because you need a two sheeted surface for this, you need a two sheeted surface for this and they have to be you know put together in some complicated way. But let us try and see if you can simplify this picture. I am hmm? just going to draw a single z plane and I am going to say all right, I start here, I have 0 phase at this point. Hmm? Definitely at the point A there is a singularity, at the point B there is a singularity. And if I were to do what I did earlier with square root of z, I draw a branch cut running from a to infinity and another one running from b to infinity. Hmm? All right, let us do that. So, here is a branch cut running from a to infinity and a second one on top of it running from b to infinity. 
now let us write the phases down of this of this function that is all that matters. So, here is a and I am now going to look at z minus a to the power a half in the z plane. Then the phase of z minus a to the power half just above the real axis on the sheet is 0 at this point. So, I just write the phase down. By this function I therefore mean the modulus multiplied by e to the i times the phase. I just write the phase down. So, out here the value of the function if z is if a is 6 for instance I look at the point 7 then it says 7 minus 6 to the power half 1 to the power half positive square root modulus taken. What is the phase at this point? This z increases z minus a changes phase by pi. So, z minus a to the half changes phase by pi over 2. So, the phase at the all along here is pi over 2. Right? In other words, what I mean by z minus a for any point z to the left of a on the real axis is modulus of z minus a to the power half multiplied by e to the i pi over 2, which gives me an i, and that is what happens when you have a minus inside the square root, you get an i. So, the phase is pi over 2. When I come here, what is the phase? It is pi because z minus a has increased by 2 pi, so the phase is pi. Now, all you got to ask is, is there any line across which the phase jumps discontinuously? Yes, on the positive real axis from a to infinity. That is why you have a cut from a to infinity. So, there is a cut here, but I am not going to bother to even draw this cut. This, I keep track of this. Now, look at z minus b this is z plane z minus b to the power half and b is sitting somewhere here this is b what are the phases of z minus b to the power half once again exactly as before the phase is 0 to the right of b everywhere to the left of b the phase is pi over 2 and below the phase is pi But what I have is a product of these two functions. So, the phases would add up in the product, right. And now we are ready to write down what are the phases of z minus a to the power a half, z minus b to the power a half, well, there is a suspected singularity at a, there is another one at b, and let us write the phases down. To the right of b, the phase of this guy is 0 and the phase of this is 0. So, the phase is just 0 here above the cut, above the real axis. Between A and B, the phase of this between A and B, the phase below, oh, let us look at the left. The phase here is still 0, but the phase here is pi over 2 everywhere to the left. So, between A and B, all I have to do is to add up 0 and pi over 2. So, it is pi over 2 here. Then let us come to the left of A. It is pi over 2 here, pi over 2 here. So, the phase is pi. Now, let us go below. Out here, between A and B, the phase of this factor is pi. And the phase of this is pi over 2 still. So, it is 3 pi over 2. And to the right, but to the below the real axis, the phase here is pi, the phase here is pi 2. So, the phase is 2 pi. Now, if I were to write this down in terms of what the actual function is, then I would say the function looks like this. Let us put modulus of z minus a 
z minus b to the power half let us put this equal to some m it is the modulus then it is clear from this picture that here is a here is b and the function is modulus at this point to the right of this the function is e to the i pi over 2 times the modulus but e to the i pi over 2 is i so it is i times the modulus here to the left is a phase pi so e to the i pi is minus 1 so out here it is minus the modulus out here then below e to the 3 pi i over 2 but what is 3 pi i over 2 minus i it is minus i so we have minus i m and out here it is m times e to the 2 pi i but what is e to the 2 pi i m itself two, phase of 2 pi is no change at all so m itself what has happened now where is the cut we started with two cuts one cut going all the way from here to infinity another cut going from all the way from here to infinity and superpose the two so you would expect a cut all the way from a to infinity with one discontinuity b to infinity with another discontinuity but what has happened is the discontinuity between b and infinity has got cancelled out this means that you can now draw the cut from just a and up to b so it is a finite cut that is it because that is where the discontinuity is and there is no discontinuity there which means there is no branch point at infinity for this function but that is now obvious by looking at the function itself if you took this function and you let z go to infinity compared to a and b you can drop a and b and you get z to the half z to the half which is z and that is analytic at infinity so there is really no singularity at infinity at all and the cut can be chosen to lie between a and b in this case okay what happens if i did the other thing z minus a to the power a half z minus b to the power minus half so now i have a ratio of two square roots by the way 1 over square root of z also has a branch point at z equal to 0 so an important lesson is that when you have a branch point the function could either vanish or it be infinite as we already know from the case of z to the half hmm? now what sort of branch points does that have most certainly it is got a branch point at z equal to a another one at z equal to b and you have to do exactly the same thing as before except that when I calculate this instead of plus half I put minus half here then the phase would still be 0 out there but this would be minus pi over 2 this would be minus pi on this side and then I do exactly the same thing as before well if it is minus pi and you add that to pi you get 0 so it is clear that the cut vanishes once again from b upwards to infinity once again you can choose the cut to run from a to b and apart from some signs and so on plus i and minus i would get interchange but it is exactly the same as before what happens to this and again you can see that this thing here as z tends to infinity is quite regular it tends to 1 so there is no singularity at infinity for this function what about this function what happens now where would you say there are branch points yeah at a there is definitely a branch point algebraic branch point three sheeted structure and so on and so also at b but do you expect the discontinuity to cancel from b to infinity in this case no no because you can see that this thing here goes to z to the one third z to the one third so the whole thing goes to z to the two thirds at infinity and that definitely has a branch point at infinity so in this case you cannot have 
a cut lying just between A and B, it has to go up to infinity with different discontinuities, with different discontinuities. So, in this, this function here would have a structure, a branch structure, here is A, here is B. So, there is a branch cut here going all the way to infinity, there is one discontinuity, a jump across this cut and there is another discontinuity when you jump across that cut. How about this? How about one third and minus one third? What do you think is going to happen? It, yeah, the cut from B to infinity would be cancelled out because you can see that whatever phase this acquires is cancelled by the phase here, it is in the opposite direction. So, from B to infinity will cancel out and indeed you can see that as Z tends to infinity, this fellow tends to 1. So, there is no problem at all. And that you can do, but it is only for the square root branch cut. If you have two square root branch cuts, the product of these two guys, you can have a finite cut. The ratio you can always do that, have a finite cut, but not for the product. For the product, you really need half powers half, powers of half here. So, some of these tricks one can play simply because these things have finite cuts. For instance, and now let us come to a very important point and that is the following. I have been talking about using Cauchy's theorem in order to evaluate integrals. We have been using the residue theorem and so on and so forth. When you have a branch cut, you cannot have a closed contour if you encircle this branch cut once because when you go back you are on another sheet. So, you no longer are on a closed contour. If you have a square root branch point from 0 to infinity, so square root of z say and there is a cut from here to there and I start at this point on the principle on the top sheet, hmm? I would like to encircle the branch point at 0, how do I draw a closed branch cut, closed contour? If I do this and I come back, I am underneath this onto the next sheet, so I need to go around that once again and come back and that is a closed contour. So, there is no harm, you can still in the presence of branch cuts still try to find closed contours and apply Cauchy's theorem and so on, but you need to ensure that the function returns to its original value once the contour comes back to the starting point, otherwise it is not a closed contour, hmm? that is crucial. So, we will do that over and over again, we will try to find closed contours in such a way that you return to the original value. And that would not be apparent if I draw just one sheet and now very often I am not going to draw multiple sheets, I am just going to draw the phases. So, we have to keep track of this point. Mm -hmm.